Hello, uh, today I am going to discuss about the design steps for uh, laterally unsupported beams. In fact, in last lecture we have discussed how to calculate the lateral torsional buckling moment and what will be the uh, lateral torsional buckling um, stress and then we have found how to calculate the design bending stress due to lateral torsional buckling. Today with the based on the last day's lecture, we will follow certain design steps and after that we will go through one example. Now in design steps basically we will try to find out first a appropriate section based on the uh, approximate section modulus and then we will check whether the assumed section is uh, safe against the uh, design bending uh, means against the bending forces coming on to the uh, member then we will check for shear whether it is safe or not then we will go for checking deflection wave buckling and wave rippling. So, one by one we will check uh, for the uh, design basis criteria means design of the beam when we are going to do we will check one by one uh, criteria like uh, deflection, shear then wave buckling and wave crippling. So, coming to design steps first we will calculate what will be the service load acting on the beam. So, once we calculate the service load then uh, we can find out the factor load also right. So, factor load uh, after calculation of factor load we can find out the factor maximum bending moment and shear force. So, factor shear force and bending moment we can calculate uh, on the basis of some load factor as per the different load say for example, whether it is dead load or live load uh, or it is wind load or seismic load basis on that we will multiply certain factor and we will try to find out the maximum bending moment and shear force under that factor load. After that we can start with a trial plastic section modulus means we can find out a plastic section modulus based on this formula that is Z p is equal to m d by f y by gamma in 0. Remember this is consider for means considering um, the section to be laterally supported, but in case of laterally unsupported beam a um, major amount of stress is reduced due to lateral torsional buckling. So, the section modulus whatever coming here will not be sufficient, we have to increase substantially. So, that the, um, the chosen section is safe against this bending moment due to lateral torsional buckling. So, what we can do we will choose a higher plastic section modulus uh, which is necessary to uh, account for lateral torsional buckling. So, what we can do we can approximately increase uh, 40 to 60 percent of the um, section size uh, means uh, plastic mod section modulus. So, what we will do actually we do not know exactly what percentage of increment increment is there means is required. So, we can try with 40 percent or 50 percent however, uh, means basically it is a trial and error process. So, finally, we have to do the trial trial method and we have to find out the actual requirement. There is no basis that uh, this much percentage if you increase then your section will be safe. So, uh, once we go through one example we will experience how to increase the section size and how to get the appropriate section. So, after finding an appropriate section what we can means uh, section modulus we can choose a suitable section means based on that plastic section modulus. So, uh, section may be I section may be channel section means based on the requirement we can choose a certain section and then with that section we will check whether the section is capable of taking that much moment due to lateral torsion buckling or not. If that is fine then we can go to uh, step 4 where we have to check the uh, 
beam for shear right so we will check for shear if the design shear strength is more than the um, uh, the shear force coming onto the beam then it is fine or we have to increase the again we have to increase the section size to uh, take care the shear in step 5 we will check for deflection as per table 6 the limiting deflection is given and we know what is the maximum deflection uh, on that particular beam uh, means considering the loading condition and support condition. So, based on the loading condition and support condition we can find out the uh, maximum deflection on that particular beam and we will ch check whether the maximum deflection is exceeding the limit permissible limit or not. If maximum deflection is exceeding the permissible limit then again we have to increase the section size to accommodate this otherwise if it is not then the section is safe from service quality point of view. Then what we can do we can go for next step. Next step is the wave buckling. So, uh, we know the beam may be the beam wave may buckle due to the concentrated load. Uh, acting on the member or at the support. So, we have to check the wave buckling and if uh, the buckling strength is more than the uh, force coming on that particular um, place then it is fine otherwise we have to increase the section size or we can increase the bearing length. If we increase the bearing length then also we can increase the buckling strength then we can keep it safe. Once it is done then again we will go for wave crippling. So, wave crippling also we have to check uh, on the basis of certain bearing. So, if the wave crippling strength is more than the uh, strength at the means uh, acting force at the support then uh, we can uh, means we can say this section is safe otherwise we have to redesign. So, this is the process which we have to follow to design a uh, laterally unsupported beam. So, the process is basically uh, a trial um, and error process where we will start the uh, means we will start with a certain section on certain basis then uh, the section has to be checked against bending moment, shear force, lateral uh, uh, wave buckling, wave crippling and deflection. So, if all the checks are done and it is passing then the section whichever is chosen is fine otherwise you have to redesign this is the process. So, following this process now we will go through one example then it will be clear to us. So, let us go through this example which is given here that is design a simply supported steel joist of 5 meter effective span carrying a uniformly distributed load of 12 kilo newton if compression flange of the joist is laterally understand. So, here effective length of the beam is 5 meter and uh, the load on the beam is taken as 12 kilo newton which is basically dead load and imposed load right. So, what we can do we can find out the maximum bending moment. So, for finding out maximum bending moment we have to find out the factor load. So, factor load what we can find is that 1.5 times the load on beam. So, factor load will be load will be 18 kilo newton per meter on the beam. Then we can find out maximum bending moment maximum bending moment will be W L square by 8 at the mid span because it is simply supported beam. Therefore, we can find out maximum bending moment as W into 8 uh, into L is 5, 5 meter was the span length by 8. So, it is coming 56.25 kilo newton meter. Similarly, maximum shear force V can be found as W L by 2. So, 18 into L is 5 by 2 therefore, we can find out as 45 kilo newton. Now, so this is step 1. 
in step 2 we can find out a trial section. So, to find out the initial section what we can find out we can find out a uh, approximate section based on the section modulus. So, Z p we can find out that is m by f y by gamma m 0. So, m we have calculated as 56.25 and f y we have calculated as means we know f y as 250 and gamma m 0 as 1.1. Therefore, the section modulus plastic section modulus required is 247.5 into 10 cube. Now, this section modulus has been calculated considering the uh, beam as laterally supported. So, in case of laterally unsupported beam, we have to multiply certain means we have to increase with certain percentage to get a uh, an appropriate section modulus right. Because in case of laterally unsupported beam, lateral torsional buckling will come into picture and because of that the uh, permissible stress bending compressive stress will be reduced uh, to some extent. So, to accommodate that we need to increase the plastic section modulus, so that uh, we can get uh, the required uh, section which will be safe. So, if so in case in this case we can increase 50 percent of the uh, Z p means Z p we can uh, increase up to say 50 percent then the Z p required will be will be 1.5 times of calculated Z p. So, this is becoming 371.25 into 10 cube kilo Newton meter sorry 10 to the 6 sorry 10, 10 cube not kilo Newton Z p. So, Z p will be millimeter cube sorry this will be millimeter cube right Z p we are putting. So, plastic section modulus of the section we found as 371.25 into 10 cube millimeter cube right. So, now uh, looking into the code that is IS 800 2007 we can see that IS HB 200 at 40 kg per meter if we consider its ZPZ is coming as 414.23 right into 10 cube millimeter cube. So, the Z p z we can provide which is higher than the required one. So, if we select I s h b 200 at 40 kg per meter then uh, we can try with this because this is uh, uh, higher than the required one. So, here we can find out the uh, properties of the section like what is the d value say 200 mm then B f we can find out 200 mm like this we can find out all the properties. Now, after finding the all properties from um, the code then we can try to find out the actual bending stress coming into the member. So, the actual bending stress coming into the member can be calculated based on this trial section. Now, I am not going into details of this calculation because of shortage of time. So, if we calculate this then we can see the required bending strength m d will be less than the m whatever we have right. So, design bending strength for this section will come less than the maximum bending moment acting on the member. So, what we need? We need to increase the section size. So, what we have to do? We have to, so first we have considered ISHB 200, then again we can consider some higher section where ZPZ value will be more than this. So, in this way we have to go on increasing and we have to check whether this is ok or not. And because of shortage of time, I am not going to check all the steps 
what I am going to do? I am going to find out the final section. So, after increasing the size of the section, we could see that ISLB 325 section will become safe. So, this calculation I will go into details. So, for IS LB 200, uh, 325 section, we can find out the relevant properties from IS code that is D is 325 millimeter and BF is 165 millimeter, then TF is coming 9.8 millimeter, TW is coming 7 millimeter then we can find out r y the minimum radius of gyration is coming 30.5 millimeter root radius r 1 is given as 16 mm and z p z is 687.76 into 10 cube millimeter cube. Similarly, the elastic section modulus z e z e z we can find from the uh, SP6 as 607.7 into 10 cube, right. And then IXX, IYY also we can find out, right. Say IXX is equal to 9870 into 10 to the 4 millimeter to the 4 and IY is equal to 510.8 into 10 to the 4 millimeter to the 4. Right. So, relevant properties of these sections are found from the code and then we can find out the effective depth D as capital D 325 minus 2 into T f thickness of flange is 9.8 plus 16 will be the root radius. So, this will become 273.4 millimeter. So, if we see the I section, it will be like this. So, from here it will be D and small d will be from here, right. And that is this is T f and this is R 1, right. So, small d will be capital D minus 2 into T f plus R 1. So, from this we can calculate the uh, effective depth, then we can find out the ratio D by T w as 273.4 by 7. So, this is becoming 39 which is less than 84 and also B by T f, B by T f will be this will be B f. Uh, B that means B f by 2. Okay. So, B f we have 165. So, B will be 82.5 then thickness of flange is 9.8 this is becoming 8.4 which is less than 9.4. So, from this we can classify the section as plastic. So, the section is plastic, right. So, accordingly we can find out the uh, uh, bending moment value in later stage. Okay. Now, we need to calculate the bending strength. So, for this step calculation of bending strength, either we can find out the bending strength from the formulas which were given in the code and we had discussed earlier or we can find out from table. From table directly also we can find out that will be uh, K L by R Y will be as it is a simply supported beam. So, K L will be 5000 and R Y was given as 30.5. So, K L by R Y ratio is coming 164 right and H F by T F H F by T f means if we draw this then 
the value of h j will be center to center distance of the flange. So, this will become h f. So, h f will be d minus means 325 minus h f uh, that will be uh, sorry t f t f is 9.8 by t f 9.8. So, h f by t f ratio we are getting as 32.16 right. So, corresponding to value of k l by r y as 164 and h f by t f as 32.16 we can find out FCRB. So, elastic critical buckling FCRB we can find out from table 14 as 122.82. Remember this has been obtained by interpolation of the data given in table 14 okay, in IS 800 2007. So, in table 14 for different values of k l by r y and h f by t f the f c r b value is given. So, from that we can interpolate and we can find out the f c r b value corresponding to 164 and 32.16. So, for this f c r b value again using table 13 corresponding to this f c r b value and f y we can find out F B D value as the design bending stress as 93.17 Newton per millimeter square right. So, F B D value we could find out. Now, for plastic section M D we can find out a uh, plastic section for plastic section it will be 1 into Z P was uh, 687.76 into 10 cube into F B D is 93.17. So, this we are getting 58.57 kilo Newton meter which is greater than 56.25 kilo Newton meter which was the maximum bending moment on the beam. So, maximum bending moment on the beam due to factor load is 56.25 and the design bending strength of the member we are getting 58.57 that means just it is becoming safe from flexural point of view. So, from flexural point of view what we could see that the at least we have to use this section this is the minimum section which we used to use that is ISLB 325 right. So, with this section we could achieve the strength as 58.57 which is just more than the actual bending moment coming into the beam. Right. Now, what we will do in step 4 we will go for checking of shear. Right. So, to check the shear we need to find out the design shear strength V d that will be we know F y by root 3 gamma m 0 into d into T w. Right. Because shear will be carried by the wave. So, area of the wave is d into T w and F y by root 3 gamma m 0 is the shear strength allowable shear stress F y by root 3 gamma m 0. So, from this if we put the value then I can get the value of design shear strength V d. Now, here d is 325 into T w is 7 and to make it each kilo Newton we can multiply with 10 to the minus 3 which is becoming 299 kilo Newton right. So, design shear strength of the beam is coming 299 kilo meter kilo Newton which is greater than the maximum shear force at the support which is 45 kilo Newton which we have calculated earlier. 45 kilo Newton is the maximum shear force due to factor load and the design shear strength is coming 299 kilo Newton. Therefore, the beam is safe against shear force. So, against shear the beam is safe. So, what we can do? Now, we can go to next step check for deflection. So, in next step we will check the deflection on the basis of maximum deflection which is 5 into w l to the 4 by 
384 EI because we know for a simply supported beam with UDL load the maximum deflection comes as 5 by 384 into W L to the 4 by 8 W L to the 4 by E i. So, if we put those value W is the um, uh, UDL load that is 12 here you remember that we are taking the service load not the factor load because deflection is checked against the actual load the service load right. So, into L is 5 meters so 5000 millimeter by 384 E i E we have 2 into 10 to the 5 because in case of steel we generally consider 2 into 10 to the 5 and I was found earlier which is 9870 into 10 to the 4 for ISLB 325 right for ISLB 325 section I X X or I Z Z was considered as this. So, after calculating this value we can find out delta as delta as 4.9 millimeter and allowable de deflection allowable deflection will be l by 300 300 so that will be 5000 by 300 this 16 point 67. So, allowable deflection is 16.67 and maximum deflection is coming this which is less than the allowable one. So, it is ok. So, from deflection point of view the chosen section is fine. Now, we will go to step 6. In step 6 what we will do? We will check for wave buckling right. So, wave buckling and wave cleaving we have to check. So, in case of wave buckling we will try to find out the uh, wave buckling area. So, for that we have to find out a bearing length right. Now, as nothing is given so we can consider bearing length as say 100 mm. If we provide 100 mm bearing length then I can find out the cross sectional area of wave buckling that is a b is equal to b plus n 1 into T w. So, here we can find out B as 100 right then N 1. Now, N 1 we know that it is dispersing 45 degree. So, if we recall that if we have a support here and if we provide a bearing of this then it will disperse up to neutral axis right. So, with the 45 degree angle. So, this will be n 1 and this is b. So, b plus n 1. So, n 1 will become d by 2 right. So, uh, n 1 will be 325 by 2 into T w. T w was taken as 7. So, I can find out the cross sectional area for the wave buckling that is 1837.5 millimeter right. Now, we have to find out the effective length of the wave. So, effective length of the wave we know that is 0 0.7 into d that is 0 0.7 into d we have calculated earlier that is 273.4. So, that is coming 191.38 millimeter and moment of inertia will be B d cube by 12. So, 100 into T w is 7 cube by 12. So, 2858.33 millimeter right. So, now we can find out the area. A will be B into T w. So, 100 into T w is 7. So, 700 millimeter square right and lambda we can find out L effective by R minimum L by R minimum. So, L effective we know that is 191.38 right 
and r minimum r is basically i by a. So, i we have calculated 2 8 5 8 point 3 3 cross sectional area is 700. So, this is becoming 2.02 right. So, r minimum is 2.02 therefore, the lambda we got 94.74 right. So, now from now we know this will be buckling class C. So, from table 9 C we can find out the value from table 9 C we can find out F C D value corresponding to lambda is equal to 94.74 and F y is equal to 250 as 114.364 Newton per millimeter square. So, design compressive stress F C D for the wave is coming 114.364 Newton per millimeter square. So, the capacity of the section the wave buckling capacity of the section will be a b into f c d. So, a b is 1837.5 into f c d value is 114.364. So, that is coming 210 kilo Newton which is greater than 45 kilo Newton. So, it is ok. That means, from wave buckling point of view also the section is safe. Now, again we will see whether it is going to fail against wave crippling or not. So, in step 7 we will check for wave crippling. So, in case of wave crippling we will find out crippling strength that will be B 1 plus N 2 into T w into F y by gamma m 0. Now, we can put those value. So, uh, B 1 is 100 N 2, N 2 we know that it will be dispersed with 2.5 slope right. So, N 2 value will become 2.5 into 16 plus 9.8, 9.8 is the T f and means thickness of flange and 16 is the root radius R 1. So, the N 2 value we can find out from this as 64.5. So, putting the value of N 2 here as 64.5, now we can find out the crippling strength right. So, this is becoming 260 1.7 kilo Newton and at the support the maximum force is coming which is shear force 45 kilo Newton and crippling strength is much more higher than this. So, the section is safe against wave crippling. So, this is how we can check one by one the section is whether section is safe against deflection shear wave crippling wave buckling after getting the section size from the flexor point of view. So, th all these checks we have we have to carry out to find out the final section size. So, here the final section size is I s L B 325 right. Now, I will uh, go few go through few slides that is the design of beam with GUI based MATLAB algorithm. So, here what we have seen that specially when the design has to be done for unsupported beam we need to do lot of iteration right. So, uh, manually to do all these things is very uh, hectic. Therefore, what we suggest that if we can develop a algorithm, GUI based algorithm, then once it is developed very easily we can 
make it useful. So, through my students, uh, some um, software has been developed. One of them I am demonstrating here, where the beam design is done for two cases. One is for laterally supported beam and laterally unsupported beam, right? So, by choosing a particular type, we can go to the design of that case, right? So, once we choose say for this case we have chosen unsupported beam, then if we go to next, then uh, we can provide this requirement like what is the maximum factor shear, right? maximum factor shear, then what is the maximum factor bending moment then what is the effective span, these are the input which we need to take from the user and maximum deflection coming on the uh, six uh, on the beam. So, maximum deflection we can calculate from the formula and this also can be done uh, through um, means through algorithm, but uh, that will be very complicated because we in that case we have to find out what is the uh, support condition, what is the loading condition and because of loading and support condition uh, deflection will be different and that uh, we have to find out. Therefore, uh, uh, means we can calculate manually for particular case and we can enter this value the what is the maximum deflection. Then what we can do other properties like we can put what is the yield stress whether we are going to consider FE410 which are mostly used or if not then we can enter the value the yield stress of the steel. Then factor safety factor, so gamma M0 value which is governed by yielding whether it is 1.1 1 .1, which is given in class 5.4.1 or something else we are going to take. If something else we have to enter here otherwise uh, if we give the checkbox here, then automatically it will take 1.1. 1 .1. Then also Young modulus we have to enter. So, all these value once enter, then we can go for design, right. So, though it shows very easy means it is uh, okay. So, once we go to next, it will show whatever data we have entered are shown here. So, whatever data we have taken finally, it has been shown then you have two option here one is design for economic section and check for a particular section. So, if user want to find out an economical section, economical section means the lowest size of the section which will be safe under the given condition and check for a particular section means we can choose a particular section and we can check whether that section is safe or not. So, these two both the options are kept here. So, according to the user's choice he can uh, he can find out means which one is required. So, after that if we click on proceed then it will show the results. So, in the results we will see that uh, uh, here for economical section if we consider say the software is giving ISJC 150, right. So, for ISJC 150 the section is safe. So, now if we click on output dot doc then the intermediate calculations are given in the file which can be seen and if one user want to check in between means if he has a doubt on the results on the software, then he can check the intermediate results from this output file and he can see whether uh, it is ok or not means the results whatever has been calculated is correct or not. If it is not correct, uh, then he can change the um, means software means uh, the algorithm he can change and he can modify it right means for the for gaining the confidence he need to check intermediate calculations. So, for that also it has been given. And if the user want to redesign also that option is there, he has to click on redesign then it will go back to the first slide 
and it will ask for data right. So, the option of redesign is there can be used another option is if we check for a particular section then we can check for a particular section also. So, for that uh, we have to click on a particular section and then we will see whether it is ok or not. So, for this case the selected beam was not ok. So, that is shown and there also you can find out the output and why it is not safe that can be found in detail through that output and then again he can redesign and can find out some other section which may be safe. So, this is how one can develop the logic and one can make a flow chart and then can find out a uh, algorithm ok. So, I would suggest the um, viewers means those who are seeing this video I would suggest them to make their own algorithm according to their own logic uh, let them try uh, an algorithm and write a program whatever language they are comfortable may be python may be c may be matlab may be fortran whichever language is comfortable he can make and ac according to his choice and his requirement he can develop the software and that will be a customized software he can use forever right and once it is developed he can again extend uh, or means he can make it versatile uh, for from different angle so that uh, later he can uh, include certain other aspects and and he can make it useful so that he doesn't have to do manually and he doesn't have to go for tedious calculations right so this is all about the design of beam in next class we'll discuss uh, certain other things like uh, the how to calculate the uh, plastic section modulus that we'll see because that i have not covered in this class okay and also parlin and gantry garar also will be taught in next few classes thank you